large non-governmental organizations, NGOs, resemble multinational corporations in both structure and operation. They are hierarchical, maintain large media, government lobbying and public, public relations departments. They headhunt, invest proceeds in professionally managed portfolios, compete in government tenders, and own a variety of unrelated businesses. The Aga Khan Fund for Economic Development, for instance, owns the license for second mobile, mobile operator in Afghanistan, among other businesses. In this respect, NGOs are more like cults than civic organizations. Many NGOs promote economic causes, anti-globalization, the banning of child labor, the relaxing of intellectual property rights, or fair payment for agricultural products. And many of these causes are worthy and sound. Alas, most NGOs lack economic expertise and inflict damage on the alleged recipients of their beneficence. NGOs are at times manipulated by or collude with industrial groups and even political parties. It is telling that the denizens of many developing countries suspect the West and its NGOs of promoting an agenda of trade protectionism. Stringent and expensive labor and environmental provisions in international treaties may well be a ploy to fend off imports based on cheap labor and the competition they wreak on well-ensconced domestic industries and their political stooges.